Hi, and welcome to SF Live. I'm your host, Christina Marie Flores. Tonight we have with us one of the new kids on the board from District 11, the supervisor, John Avalos. Welcome, John. Thank you. How I are you? I you were going to say one of the new kids on the block. <laughs> that too. Well, that would it wouldn't really be a new kid on the board because uh, you actually have been around the Board of Supervisors for quite a long time. I Yeah, I worked for about three and a half years with mm -hmm. uh, my puppet master, Supervisor Chris Adele. Oh, no, the puppet master. <laughs> Lovely. Well, I want to know a little bit about you. You were born in Wilmington, California. Uh, that's right. Uh, Wilmington's a uh, part of Los Angeles, uh, right on the waterfront. And uh, it's, uh, it's a small town, uh, mostly Chicano and Latino population. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad was a longshore worker, so he worked right there in Long Beach, San Pedro, right on the docks. Mm -hmm. Your dad and your grandfather? And my grandfather as well. Uh -huh. My grandfather, he actually got a job on the docks. Uh, he didn't have a job. He, he kind of landed one after he was... He would buy. He would uh, collect firewood on the docks, and then he would sell that. And eventually, he got a job in the companies. But uh, he was kind of scavenging for a while just to get by. Mm -hmm. And you are a third generation Mexican American. Uh huh. And uh, very now, were your family, your father or mother, either of them into politics or something that would have led you to where you are today? You know, uh, not not really. Uh, my my dad had a friend uh, who was with uh, his union who ran for city council in Los Angeles and I you know did some precinct work for him when I was like 10 just dropping lit but that mm -hmm. was it. That was the only, you know, politics I had uh, when I was a kid and didn't really do much more and understood much more of it than than you know how to drop it so it wouldn't fly away in the wind. So <laughs> okay. So you weren't it. like a community organizer with your gang of kids that you hung out with. I mean, were uh, you an instigator as a kid? What were you like as a kid? As a kid, I was uh, actually I loved riding my bike as a kid. And there were mm -hmm. all these little great places to ride my bike, and I was just kind of this you know kid who had a you know this uh, red. Uh, Stingray, Schwinn st oh, Stingray, the, and I just like to do jumps, and I thought I was Evil Knievel, and uh, mostly it was just like athletic and loved sports and loved baseball, and, and I was in L.A. and Wilmington until I was about 12 years old, and then we moved to the East Coast, and then everything changed. Is that when you ended up in Andover, Massachusetts? That's right. Ah, and yeah. how did you get to Andover, Massachusetts? How did you make that jump? It was just bizarre. Well, my, my parents got divorced, and one of the first families that, and anyone I knew, my peers, when I was in Wilmington, that you know, parents got divorced, so that was like a big thing, you know, we were, we were like, you know, Catholic, and no one did that kind of thing, oh, it was yeah. like excommunication yeah. and all that, but my, you know, my parents got divorced, my mom remarried a person from the, who was from the East Coast, and he landed a great job on the East Coast, and we all packed up and moved over there, and so we had, we were the first uh, Mexican-American family in Andover, Massachusetts. Wow. So did you meet a lot of prejudice there, or were they fairly open, the in community? In Massachusetts, prejudice? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, are you what are you talking about? Let's really? see. Um, <laughs> you know, my first nickname was uh, was Chief, because people thought I was Indian. They didn't know what Mexican oh, was. Oh, no. So, so they just kind of figured. They wouldn't say hello to me. They'd say how. <gasps> that was uh, not everyone, but there were, you know, a lot of people did that. Really? How did that feel as a kid? Just, I mean, nobody. Well, you know, when you're like the real minority in a place and you're trying to fit in, you try and just go along or ignore. And so that was like, you know, it was kind of hard. You know, but then, then they found out I was Mexican. I wasn't Indian. Although Mexican is, mestizo is part, you know, indigenous. Mm -hmm. um, they, they call me Chico. Okay. That was a step up. I oh, guess. from Chief Chico to and, Chico. Chico and the man. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, was uh, you know show in the seventies? Yeah, I remember. Uh, I was Chico, and kind of went along with that for a little while too. And now, when I see people from you know Andover, Massachusetts, they're saying, "I can't believe we called you Chico." Oh no! Yeah, so people have become enlightened and, over the years. And, wow! And and your journey led to university, where you studied. You got into politics then, or English? Yeah, you know, I got into politics uh -huh. more like uh, you know there's a little bit of anti-apartheid work, mostly going to demonstrations or. Um, there was all this, all the, the wars happening in Central America. We go to demonstrations protesting the Reagan administration's, defend, you know, uh, supporting the Contras mm -hmm. against the Nicaraguan government. You know, things like that. I, you know, but I was mostly, mostly high level. There was a, there was a rally. I go to the rally, but I was never organizing the rally and didn't really get involved in anything like that until I came to San Francisco, mm -hmm. and uh, it was really. Uh, you know, meeting people who are really, you know, activists uh, at the ground level that I felt rooted with, that really got me involved in, in politics. And my first place that I would say had the most impact on me was uh, going to social work school at San Francisco State University. Mm -hmm. And that was in 89, were you? No, I got here in 89, uh -huh. uh, but I went to social work school in 95, okay. 96. And mm -hmm. I had, a, had an internship at Coleman Advocates for Children and Youth. Okay. And that's where I got involved in real politics in San Francisco and, and uh 
you know, working with City Hall, trying to make City Hall more accountable, especially around making sure that the city was uh, doing more to protect families and children and, and youth. And at that time, it was trying to prevent youth from being over incarcerated. And this, so you moved to San Francisco in 89. What was the city like then? How different was it than it is today? I mean, do you remember what it was like when you first moved here? Yeah, it was, uh, it was much more, you know, a hard edge and working class and uh, than it is now. And I moved to uh, Hayden Webster. My first apartment was on Hayden Webster. Oh, okay. Which is right across from uh, some public housing. And uh, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of violence going on, a lot of stuff happening between the people who lived in the, housing projects there with uh, with, the, with the projects up on um, Bay Street and, mm -hmm. and Hunters Point. So we saw a lot of that, a lot of that violence on the street. And um, and I was struggling, you know, when I first came here. It was it was a, a recession when I first came to the city. It was really hard to find a place to, you know, to land for work. And I didn't have a lot of great skills to rely on at that, that point. Is that and that's when you were cafe latte? I was, uh, yeah, Is I was cafe latte. <laughs> I worked at a coffee cart uh, downtown. Uh, on the corner of uh, Market and Sansom. Uh -huh. and I worked there about six hours a day. I would actually, we would get the cart, pull it out of the warehouse, which is on 9th and Howard. Mm -hmm. We'd take it over uh, to uh, Market and Sansom and have to push it up onto the onto the sidewalk, hook it up. So I started at five o'clock in the morning, opened up the cart at six o'clock in the morning for business. It would leave at like 12. Wow. And uh, did that for about a year. And I bet you learn yes. a lot of stuff on the street, though. I mean, you're the coffee connection in the morning, that these people are on their way to work. Did you overhear a lot of things, grievances um, about the city? or? Uh, you know, it was, uh, they had the bike messengers that were right there. That was okay. there the wall It was uh, where they kind of congregated. So I hear a lot about kind of the scruffy work of uh, the bike messengers. I always thought it was very romantic, the, the bike messengers. You know, kind of saw them as like, um, you know, people who were living on the edge, like people who lived in, who worked in the... Uh, in the whale boats back in the 1800s. It was some people just completely off the off the charts, uh, but living like a really fascinating life. And so I hear, heard a lot about them, and they got trod on a lot by by people they they served, and but they actually had a lot of pride in what they were doing. It was really cool. Now you were talking about Coleman advocates and getting involved with the Boys and Girls Club and that. What made you decide that that is what you wanted to go into? Is there any one incident or thing that you saw in the city that was needed for children in the city? Or, well, um, yeah, I mean, I saw that uh, young people didn't have a lot of choices, a lot of options about what they could do in their after-school hours, or there were there was limited youth employment opportunities and. And I wanted to see how I can work with young people to help them define what they needed and get City Hall to pay more attention to them. Mm -hmm. So um, we did a lot of outreach and workshops with young people, um, helped them to like draft proposals that they can take to City Hall and try and get supported by the Board of Supervisors, oh, that's great. shop things around for, for legislation. Um, you work with Chalk, too. I worked with Chalk. And that's so and Chalk funny. Chalk was one of the groups I worked with to do that. <laughs> and that is wonderful. That's actually my daughter works with Chalk, Monica Flores, and she has a show here at um, Youthline Live here at Access. And it's so cool that you worked on that. Uh, how long did you work with them? I was there. I wasn't there a long time. It was mm -hmm. probably like seven months. I would just get out of school, and it was my first job. I landed at a social work school, and it didn't pay me enough money, so I had to, like, well, I had that job. I was looking for something else. But it was fun. I had, had a great time. We hired about... 30 youth line listeners um, between the ages of like 15 and and 22 and we had a really great environment we made for them where they felt really comfortable and they learned to be you know counselors to other young people help them make choices about you know gangs or about staying home or about you know in the worst case like prevention of suicide a lot of things were you know they they got involved in doing really hard work with, with their parents mm -hmm.